everyone. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out to this talk. We were kind of we kind of flew it um, all together at the last second, yeah. and we thought it'd be awesome. And and you guys showed up, so I think we all really appreciate that. We do. Thank you. So I'm Daniel, uh, the world's most adorable art critic, and these are the little friends of printmaking. So I thought it was a good combo. <laughs> um, Let's, uh, oh, and thank you, Giant Robot. If you're listening at home, visit giantrobot.com. <laughs> uh, and you can see the art. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you guys, you guys just moved like six months ago from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to yes. LA. <laughs> How different is the art world of LA to Wisconsin? Well, it couldn't be more different. I mean, the, the art experience in Milwaukee is, it was a really great experience because uh, there aren't a lot of, um, it's not a lot going on, and because it's such a void, it sort of allows you to sort of create the rules and the parameters for what you're doing, and you can, we said we were a business selling art prints, and we were a business selling art prints, because <laughs> there wasn't anyone to say no, or to offer us like a different way of fitting into a, a larger art scene. I mean, because it's just a wasteland. It's a vast wasteland. But like, no offense. No offense. But, but that's because, because it's a, a void. People can create whatever they want. Uh, and that's what's really different about Milwaukee as opposed to LA. I, I feel like, you know, there's galleries, there's institutions, there's lots of opportunities for artists. And like, it sort of shapes the direction that you might, you know, take your practice so that you fit into these things. Uh, whereas we were just alone in the wilderness doing whatever we felt like. No pressure to yeah. like show us yeah. that way. Yeah, and I guess that, I mean, it, it's exciting that there are so many opportunities, but it's also a little daunting because you do have to kind of find where you fit in here. You know, whereas in, LA. Yeah, yeah. whereas in Milwaukee, it didn't matter where you Because you didn't. You were just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just didn't. <laughs> it was and, just a guarantee. And yeah. like, as far as printmakers go, in Milwaukee, were you guys the only Oh no, or there are only a few, right? No, well you'd be surprised. Wisconsin is actually, it's got like a really rich history of printmaking. Madison is one of the best schools in the nation to go to for printmaking. It was one of the first uh, major universities to teach printmaking uh, as a fine art. Yeah. Uh, to take it from commercial a commercial art medium to a fine art medium. And so like it has that sort of legacy and just a lot of printmakers come through Wisconsin and specifically Madison. Uh, that's what, that's where we were taught. Yeah. So you still had like a ton of competition going on. Well, in Madison, it was very like, oh well, yeah, everybody. It's pretty Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then in, in, we moved to Milwaukee, and it has such like a history of industry where there were a lot of letterpress shops mm -hmm. that were doing it commercially, and then they kind of died out, and people came in to buy up the equipment and right. then start their own little mm -hmm. boutique letterpress, you know, thing. So there was still a lot of printmaking going on there, but I would say, you know. It wasn't as, as rich of a scene as Madison. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it compares to LA. Yeah. So yeah. We haven't been here long enough to yeah. know that yeah. there's a, an amazing printmaking scene hiding out that we just hasn't invited us out. Well, Besides I mean, like, our little lunches. Right, every yeah. few months. <laughs> <laughs> we, every, every few months we throw a printmaker's lunch, but there's only about five of us or six maybe of us. Yeah, yeah, maybe Yeah, there's like eight. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Hanging out, we can get Kevin Tom, you know, yeah. Yeah, or we can round it up to ten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but when it, it, in uh, Wisconsin, were you able to get like a hundred people? To oh like that? well, I, I mean, if you're in Madison, yeah, you could you could fill an auditorium with printmakers. Wow. Yeah. But uh, in Milwaukee, it was it was a small group, mm -hmm. and there weren't a lot of opportunities. There's not a lot of opportunities for any people at any walk of life in Milwaukee, so they're all fighting to the death. <laughs> over our, our meager scraps. Yeah. So it's really nice to be out here where everyone is a like friendlier because yeah. we're not, you know, you don't, you don't have the knife to the throat. Of the you don't have to play like King of the Snow Mountain. Yeah, King of the <laughs> Tiny Hill. <laughs> um, and, and you you were able to have like galleries like Giant Robot and stuff from even uh, while you're in Wisconsin because of internet. And yeah, I mean, I don't remember. Uh, maybe Eric remembers, but I don't I remember don't how remember. long ago we started showing with Giant Robot, but it was a long time ago. Maybe five, six years ago. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe longer. I mean, yeah. Michelle but, would know. But, but yeah, Michelle does. We don't know. Quick, call Michelle <laughs> in Mongolia. <laughs> Calling Mongolia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, we, we were you know lucky enough to show a bunch of different you know, institutions yeah. in LA. 
but and pretty much all of Giant Robot too, like San Francisco and New York, and, you know, the whole gamut. The whole gamut. Did, did Eric reach out to you guys, or you guys reached out to Eric? I don't know. We first visited Giant Robot in 2003. We were visiting, uh, and we did a show on, on third, and like it was a group show with Sari Pop and Tetsunori and Jeremy Lubisevich. Mm -hmm. And then we came the day after and we thought we were king shit. Yeah, yeah. And we thought they would know who we all were. Yeah. <laughs> the only one they recognized was Tetsunori. Yeah. <laughs> they saw this comic book here. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, that was our first time visiting here. Wow. Yeah. And was, was that, do you think you were able to, to have the following like you guys do with Prince because of social media or even before that it was growing? Even before online? And oh, yeah, I mean, I don't think that we would be anywhere where no. we were without the internet. You know what I mean? It like, makes all things possible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We would just be like some doofuses making friends in Wisconsin. <laughs> right. And yeah. Now we're doofuses here. <laughs> <laughs> and some people know about us. But I mean, you know, uh, we were one of the first people, one of the first artists that we knew uh, that had a website right. that had our work shown on our website, so it was really easy to get people to look at stuff wherever they were. So. We had a head start because I was working in IT and web design. <laughs> nice. So like, yeah, we were the only artists we knew that had a website. <laughs> we were just nerding out. Yeah. Our code. Uh, yeah, building our HTML. Like, yeah. yeah. It, it's so cool how that allows all artists and galleries to connect now. Where yeah. Before it was so difficult, now it's so, you can reach so much further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, of, of your prints, I was going to ask you, what, what's a typical edition that you guys do? How many are in a typical edition by the little friends? Mm, I guess it depends on how strong we feel, we feel about the image. If we're like, this is too weird, we'll probably only make 50 mm -hmm. and see how it does. But if we think it's if like... we believe in it, or really more, if we're doing it for a gallery and they want a certain number, then we'll probably kick it up to 100. Mm -hmm. So that we have some, they have some. And then like, we'll just see how it goes. For concert posters, are you doing hundreds for yeah. the show? Yeah, yeah, I mean, but that's all the size of the contract with the fans, you know. But it's still just you two making them, yes. right? <laughs> and I think people sometimes forget that, but yeah, it's just us. And we don't, and we don't have a machine. It's, it's these meager guns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't know how well versed everyone is with screen printing, but doing a hundred screen prints it's intensely know. physical. Yeah. Yes. For a bunch of like nerds, it's like really, it's a lot of work. It's and and work. emotional too, because you're standing at <laughs> the same thing. Very <laughs> emotional. Like, there are a lot start of to go wrong. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> if it's just off by the slice amount, you're gonna have to start all uh, hundred again. When you see a defect about thirty prints in, that is hard. <laughs> that Does is that hard. happen? Oh, well, yeah. yeah, and it's funny. Especially too. if you're printing by yourself, which sometimes we are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you you asked us to bring like our favorite print that we made, yeah. and it was hard to even choose because, like, after a while, all you see are the defects, right. you know? No one else knows. Like, yeah, oh, but you see the defect. You can show everyone here. I'll take it out of the bag. Awesome. I asked the, the little friends to bring. I like I like referring to you guys as the little friends. That's fine. Right? That's fine. I just think it's so awesome whenever, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Should I pass this around? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So everyone can be yeah, very careful. <laughs> so this is, how many colors is that? Uh, that's uh, seven colors. I think it's eight. eight it's eight, eight screens. Including seven the patch. Yeah. Eight screens and like a rainbow roll? Sort of no thing. rainbow roll. No, no, no. no fancy tricks, just wow. extra yeah. ink. Extra ink. And it's all transparent layers of ink. So it's that's all transparent. Like, it yeah. looks like even more than that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think there's like, I don't even remember how many individual colors there are. Oh no, no. So when, when, it's, when we're doing a three color print, we can make a little palette of the different colors that we expect there to be. And it'll be like in the range of 12, maybe 14 colors. Wow. When, when you're doing like seven colors, that's, that's just, it's so many colors that we're just like, well, we'll just see what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that part of the process too? Like, just throwing down colors, or is it all planned out beforehand? It's, it's all, all planned out. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and we don't really know how it's going to go, but it's planned up to the best of our yeah. ability. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen people. There are definitely a lot of people who do it more experimental for making. Sure. But like you or said, or treat like, it additively, mm -hmm. where they're like, "Oh, I'm going to do this, and yeah. then we're going to look at it, and, and then, then we're going to do this." Mm -hmm. 
But there, there's already so much frustration in printmaking. I'm just like, just figure it out before yeah. and, and then do it, you know. And so one of the things that I saw as I was doing all my research about the little friends <laughs> over the last several days was you guys will do one sketch yeah. if you do a sketch at all. Yes. And it'll be really small. Yes. So you can read it across the room and then you'll put it in flash. Uh -huh. Is that still the case? Yes. Still the case. Even for a magazine illustration or something. We just hate sketching. Mm -hmm. It's just awful. But why why Flash as opposed to Illustrator or Photoshop? We use Flash MX and that's partly a uh, just a the devil you know sort of thing. Right. Okay. It's it's a holdover from when I did work in web design. Gotcha. Like back then when Flash MX was a current product. Yeah. It's before a, iPhones destroyed all things yeah. Flash. <laughs> yes. But like the thing the thing about Flash MX, which is great as opposed to Flash today, which is um, more like Illustrator. Is it's sort of like MS Paint with vectors. <laughs> it's just kind of amazing. Yeah. You can, like draw with a paintbrush and then start cutting it up into vectors. Oh I mean, because you're drawing, you know, the drawing utility is really similar to paint. It's really freeform, but it's plotting all of those points for right. you, as opposed to like you know, have however few points Illustrator yeah. plots. I think Illustrator loves to you draw something and then it reduces it to the minimum number of points, yeah. <laughs> and you lose all the nuance. But Flash is like it's very much for people who love to scribble. Now, granted, we're talking Flash MX, like, after Adobe bought Flash, I don't really know what they did with it. But... Well, they just turned it to Illustrator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no upgrading. Yeah. yeah. No upgrading. No, we haven't upgraded at all. Just the OS. And yeah. So far, so far, so good. We'll see. And yeah. then in Illustrator, I was reading you add textures to all the, the palettes. Is that what... Is that kind of like a secret ingredient for one of your friends? Textures that people don't even really notice right off the bat? Well, yeah, it helps, especially yeah. when you're layering two inks. It can be really boring. Like you have you have white, a flat of white ink, and then a flat of black ink. Why not like bury what's underneath the black ink so that you get a little something, yeah. a little hidden something? Yeah, like so even on the, on this cat print, I know there's like uh, kind of. Oh. <laughs> um, Here. There's like a, yeah, there's like a, air, there's areas that kind of almost have a vintage feel, because sure. it is, but that's all done on purpose, right? In yeah. Five. Here wow. You go. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we try not to be hokey. When people started putting digital dirt, yeah, and sort of things like that, into their, yeah. and things like that into their prints, we were really dismayed. We were like, oh no, it should look... Amazing. It should look like perfectly printed. Well, because that's the interesting thing is, you know, we've gotten the note before from art directors. Oh, we really want that silk screen look, you know, the shitty look. And it's just it, should, like, it should look raw. No, like, no, actually, silk screen is like a really precise way of reproducing yeah, an image. Yeah. And like, if it looks bad, it's because you don't know how to do it. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, but we try to put some of that in there, you know. So, in, just for visual interest, say. In this one, what would a texture be? For that one, it would probably be textures underneath, underneath, so that you know you get a little variation in the ink, and okay. maybe a little bit of light. Um, I guess there's no other way to say it, but digital dirt, just to break up some of the big flat areas. Gotcha. So that I mean, because otherwise, I mean, it's so funny with silkscreen because you're sort of at the mercy of the texture of the paper mm -hmm. that might break up the surface of the ink. Mm -hmm. So like if you put those things in yourself, it kind of hides gotcha. the inevitable flaw, yeah. the defect that's yeah. coming no matter what. Yeah, that's so awesome. <laughs> um, another thing is, uh, little friends got me addicted to this website, Espresso Beans. Oh no, I'm <laughs> which, sorry. Which if you, if you don't know this site, it's like it's the place to geek out on prints and start battles and all sorts of funny things. Yeah, battles. Yeah, it's mostly battles. Yeah. But the one thing that happens on there a lot are, are flippers. Yes. People who buy prints just to immediately resell them on eBay for more. Yeah. And I want to get your opinion on flippers, because everyone has a... <sighs> well, I, I almost don't have an opinion yeah. on them, because we've, we've, early on, you know, we used to make concert posters almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. And that's when, that was our main exposure to print collectors. And it was just... users? Yes. <laughs> and it was just so, it might have been pre before the yeah. site started, but I don't know. Um, it was just so dismaying to see our work on eBay, like, but we're not selling it. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you sell it to someone for what you think is a good price, and the price of things is, we really think about it. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to charge as little as we can for a print, so that the maximum number of people can have it. 
And so the people can have our prints if they like it a little. Yeah. They don't have to love it. Mm -hmm. They don't have to love us. Like it's not a five hundred dollar investment where you have to like, oh, well, who are these people? Do I like them? <laughs> yeah. Like, do I like all of their work? You know, like you don't have to think about any of that. You're just like, oh, I like that cow and bicycle. I'll just buy it. And like, so when we sell something for as little as we can, that's not with the idea in mind that someone would buy it and then turn around and try and sell it for like a hundred dollars uh, or whatever. Yeah. And so it was really disappointing and like, so we just tried, we were so passive aggressive in trying to just shake the collector thing. And one of the things we did, I mean, it, it, the reason why they were interested in concert posters is you can't reprint a concert poster. Yeah. It's so dated. It's dated. Well, and, you know, you, you've got a contract with a band or however you've been hired to do the poster for an X amount of, you know, copies produced and you can't make more. So because it'd be a once, Yeah, once they're sold out, they're sold out. And if somebody has something that's sold out, then all of a sudden, you know, they can bump the price up, right? So... We started moving away from concert posters uh, and more into art prints, partly because that's what our audience wanted. I mean, we got a lot of emails that were like, oh, I love that poster. Here's what I did. I just cut the banding right off the bottom. Thanks for putting the banding on the bottom so I just take scissors and cut it right off. And we were like, oh, okay. Boy. That was, yeah. not, yeah. Like, that was we, not That was not the intended idea. Right. Of the trade, but, you know. Or, uh, I love this, but I hate this band. But you know, if you ever make something like it for a band I like, yeah. you know. So we were like, well, maybe we should just make art prints that are about the size and the shape and the aesthetic of a concert yeah. poster. And that was that was almost ten years ago. Wow. And that was the beginning of sort of the little friends thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But what that did is it just totally alienated us from collectors because it meant. It's our artwork, we own it, and we can do as many editions and change it and like between the editions and we can do whatever we like and maybe yours isn't maybe you know what? Your print is worth what you pay for it and what you think about it. That's it. Yeah. Like so we really just divorced ourselves from the entire thing. The only time that we ever uh, deal with collectors at all is if we do something for Mondo. Mm -hmm. you know, they when, which is movie uh, recreations of movie posters. And yeah, sometimes. I mean, they do, they do a bunch of stuff, like we have done, you know, things for Adventure Time through them, right. and uh, those we, we saw, you know, on eBay for, they'll still pop up occasionally yeah. on yeah. eBay for way more than we sold them right. originally. But it, that's fun, and we'll just still continue to do it because it's fun to be able to do things that are official mm -hmm. with, like, cool properties that never have any access to, like, yeah. or, no, we're, gonna, or we're gonna, like, walk up yeah. to yeah. Cartoon Network and be like, hey, we like a bunch of One of the, speaking of, like, being able to make your editions, one of the things I, I love about what you guys do is when you do a new colorway, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is taking the same imagery but changing the colors right. normally, but the, the little friends will add new layers sometimes, yeah. you know, or, or, like, borders, and it'll become a whole entirely new piece. Yeah. yeah. I Sometimes I feel really guilty because... I mean, we have one like that that we're about to put on the site, and I was thinking about having to write the newsletter and be like, hey, it's a vastly improved version of this best-selling print. <laughs> Sorry you bought it. <laughs> and, but like, what, I don't know what, well, either you have to just throw it away and start over, or, but it's fun to go back and revisit things. Especially, I mean, we print them ourselves, so we know where all the problems are. Yeah. So you're like, oh, if I just do, if I just flip this around, this print would be so much better. <laughs> yeah. And then so next time around, like, it's a totally different print. And, and it, it, it's awesome because you guys are cultivating what I call the art fan versus the art collector. Yes, thank you. The, yeah. they, they, they follow you guys wherever you guys go. Yeah. Versus like where it is or, or the price point. They, they don't care so much. Well, and I think, I mean, you know, I hate to speak in generalizations, but they're a lot more fun to hang out with. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, like... We have things to talk about. We have we have some friends who definitely, like, they have the art collectors that follow them. And they, it's almost, it's not necessarily an antagonistic relationship, but it's like... Almost. It, it's kind, it kind of feels like that. And I like the idea that we have fans. I like the idea that, like, the people who buy our work, granted, they don't have to, like, into the idea of us, but they kind of are because we're making art prints. We're not necessarily, you know, making posters for things where you're like, oh, well, I can buy that piece because I like that band or that movie or whatever. They're buying the work because they like 
you know, what's come out of our head onto the paper, right? So they kind of like us to a certain extent, and that means that we usually get along with them, which right. is pretty cool. So. That, I mean, that is really cool that you can hang out with the, the people who collect prints from you. Yeah. And you don't, usually don't hear stories of, you'll hear stories of like, you know, huge artists hanging out with one or two collectors, but not like a ton. Yeah. Because when you make something out of 100 or 300, there's so many more people that you're yeah. connecting to. Yeah. But it, it's fun to go and do fairs. We don't do all, a lot of them, but we'll do the Running Game Craft Fairs like around where we live. And it's fun because... <laughs> We can actually carry on a conversation about things with the people who come up and they talk about the prints that they have or and what they like and you know, I mean they feel like they know us and I guess they kind of do because yeah. like they they know our work pretty well. And yeah. we we really try to make it a reflection of our sense of humor and what we think. Like the cat on the bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. That's all us. Yeah. Yeah, that is that's just Self-portrait. <laughs> that's so awesome. That, that's the best too when someone comes up to the booth and goes, "What's this about?" Oh yeah, oh, no. that's that's pretty much that ends the conversation right there for me. I <laughs> like to tell those people time wasters. It's like anyone who comes in and says, "What's this about?" is not going to buy anything. <laughs> they just want explanations. They just, their friend is in the next booth and they're just killing time. They're like, well, "What's this one? What's that one?" Um, I guess. I'm, well, we can keep it short, because sure. I, I wanted my uh, my final question to be, I feel like the ultimate debate in prints, and yeah. is that, can you call it a poster, or must it be a uh, print? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a good question, and you know, it's funny because we, at least once a month, I'll get an email from somebody, because it, we do use the word on our website seemingly interchangeably, yeah. print and posters, although, I mean, they do mean something slightly different to us, but... Um, I guess a poster for us is if we're hired to do something. Right. You know, if, if it we're, serves a purpose outside of itself. Yeah. And a print is, you know, a, a print, a poster can be a print, but a print isn't necessarily a poster. Yeah. It's getting too confusing for me now. Is it confusing? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if we do a, a concert poster, it's a poster. If yeah. we do a poster for an art exhibition, it's a poster. Yeah. Okay. But if we do a, you know, a catalog, <laughs> But I mean, at the same time, like, it's, it, you know, we put the same level of work into them, you know. So I'm not saying that one is lower than the other. Yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah. In fact, like, the posters could be way more interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really interesting because this is, like, a battle. Like, it, even at the, when we do a lunch and we ask people, can you be posters, uh, like, one of, one of my friends will be like, no, it's a print. Like, it, 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 it's like a distinction thing. Yeah, yeah. To separate it. But uh, thank you guys so much. No thank problem. you. And thank you. Thank the live audience. Thank you to the live audience. Yeah. Should we see um, if anybody has questions? Oh yeah. Do you have any other questions about prints or print making or how to be a little friend? <laughs> <laughs> you can always just come up to us. Or or how screen printing works. Eric. Oh, I was wondering. Uh, where did you? Do you guys? I, I couldn't hear all of these. But I mean, uh, is there a line where you cross it in terms of other people's IP? Because you said. A bondo, you get to do stuff with like bigger things that are licensed. But what about yeah. if it's unlicensed? Like, can you guys just bust your own Star Wars print? Seems oh, like, I, mean, no. I, I guess I guess do it. But I guess that you can. can. See, that's the thing. The scary thing is, yeah, you totally can. I mean, but, but you're taking on a risk. I yeah. mean, sometimes we'll do things through a gallery, and there'll be like an extreme gray area of of consent from an IP holder, and. We're just walking that line and hoping that nothing bad happens. But, it, it, but we, it, we're trying to take less and less of that on. That's the thing. It's like it, it. It's interesting because you know we've seen people do stuff like that where they 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 are not working for the brand, but they'll do something about the brand, and then they end up getting hired by the right. brand because they did it. And then and so other like, people and so the really cautious people maybe they lose out. Yeah, I mean, sense. but I've also seen it where you know other people get slapped with a season. So after they made like oh, X yeah. amount the whole yeah. edition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just kind of like I I don't know. I mean we just kind of try to stay out of that. Caution is the better part of that. Yeah. Except the stuff that's getting flipped on eBay is usually the stuff that's kind of IP like someone else, you know, like oh, the Milo stuff is all on eBay. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. the most possible. Like, well, that's that's so if you guys made like your own Star Wars one, I bet you if, if we it, put it on eBay, they'd shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you sold it, like, let's say, a gallery like here that's a Star Wars thing, someone would buy it, probably put that on eBay, rather than putting your cat on a bicycle. Yes, right. that, that would not probably fare so well on yeah. eBay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> cats on bicycles could have more surgeons but, on their I guess. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, and the, the prints that we've seen of ours that are flipped on eBay always are like, you know, they have something to do with like, it's our Adventure Time stuff, or, you know, our posters for Guided by Voices, or Flight of Concords, or something like that, you know? Yeah. Not usually our, just like our prints. Not a lot of resale value. No. <laughs> Which is awesome because then it's for the fan. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Another question. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you guys do that thing called flat stock, which I don't know anything about? I've only heard of it. I'm wondering we, if you guys do. We did we've it done once. it a total of one time. Um, we were, can you explain what that is? I sort yeah. of don't know, but I've only heard of it, and it seems like they've never had one here, right? They they've had one in San Francisco, but that's the closest they've had it. Uh, it's a biannual um, poster. Convention and buying fest. Yeah, it's a fair. Uh, it's all culture posters. And they, they have it usually in conjunction with a music uh, festival. festival. So they have it in Chicago in conjunction with Pitchfork. They have it in Austin in conjunction with South by Southwest. And then in Seattle with uh, Bumbershoot. So triannually. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's, oh yeah, that's true. It's triannually because they added the Pitchfork one recently. Um, oh yeah, and they have them in Europe as well too. Yeah. So I guess they just have a whole bunch of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. We, since we don't really create posters anymore, they're mostly art prints, you mm -hmm. know, um, we can't really do that. They're very strict about, like, the amount of um, art prints versus concert posters you right. have. It's but, all about um, music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's about music. And it was funny, you know, when we did it, uh, the one time that we did it, um, it was during our tour, actually, that James touched on earlier that uh, we had, we went around the country doing art events with uh, our cool. friend Sarah Cobb. Uh, from Montreal, but um, when we were there, it was just such a weird situation because, you know, we usually, even if we did big bands, they were like big bands, like big to us, like Guided by Voices, right, yeah. or, you know, Death Cat for Cutie or something, it wasn't like, you know, huge, huge bands. So you're sitting there in a booth and people just walk up to you and like, look at you and say, Nickelback, and you're like, I don't want <laughs> funny that. you said that because the, what's that guy from Nickelback, he came to the booth. Chad Kroger. Chad yeah, Kroger, Kroger came to the booth. Yeah. He's like, do you have any Nickelback posters? No. Yeah. Come on, Chad. Uh, he asked for his own band. Yeah. People Come on, Chad. Yeah. We know who you are. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no. but yeah, I mean, they'll just like, and you just end up, you know, it's like the whole day point to like your friends who have this poster. We don't have any Metallica posters, but if you go down there, I yeah. think it's <laughs> So, I mean, did, well, I mean, for us it was very strange because we're used to setting up our own art events or being a part of group shows with lots of prints, and it's a totally different experience to go to a place where there's a hundred people selling the exact same thing, and we were like, we're making comparatively like no money doing this. Yeah. So and that was a lesson for us, where it was like, go where that not everyone is selling that the actually exact same thing. Is when we like this is a really interesting yeah. show that we're in right now because. It's not the same thing over and over again. Yeah, that's what we like about but it. It was a weird sort of market to be in. But that's when we, doing flat stock was the thing that made us start doing things like Renegade Craft Fair. Right. Um, where it could be a more varied sort of yeah, audience. Yeah, we, we started looking for the place where we could go to sell prints where our neighbor wasn't also selling prints and his neighbor and his neighbor. Yeah. And it's cool that you guys can do that because you're also the creators and yeah. the print makers. Exactly. Yeah, yeah a little bit more flexible. Yeah, <laughs> access. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Any more questions? Good. Wait, talk, you have to talk about your. Oh, I have to talk about mine. You didn't even do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dan, you'll talk about that. Yeah, your yeah. That's, that's all I have. Well, that, that, I, I, made a, I made a print, and I, I guess it, it kind of goes with today, and it's like a motto. Do you have the choice to be excited or afraid? Because I was. I, I was kind of afraid. I was like, Eric, let's let's do an event and get some all these cool people out here. And but then uh, fear and excitement are, are the same emotion, so I switched it to being, oh, I'm really excited about this yeah. now instead of scared that we're gonna have to set up a thing and do it in two days. <laughs> but it came out awesome. Well, and, thank, uh, you. thank you. Yeah, thanks. yeah. That's all I have to say. All right. All right. Thanks. Sweet. Thanks, everybody. Thank this, this is my broadcast of Master Print Theater. Yeah. Episode one. <laughs> the little friends of their name. Episode one point. <laughs> 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 <laughs>